Hey all, I'm just back from a productive trip in London, UK, and I was at the Health Optimization Summit, and there the organizers connected me with none other than Ben Greenfield, so a pretty huge star in health, triathlons, ultra performance, yada yada yada. So I got a quick uh, interview with him, uh, just a short one, seven or eight minutes. Uh, really nice guy, chatted to him briefly outside of this as well. And I think you'll really enjoy it. Great rapport. And even the other journals who were there waiting to get a quick moment with him uh, actually clapped at the end of this one, which was kind of funny. So enjoy, and here we go. I'm here at the Health Optimization Summit, fantastic event, and I have met a very big fish indeed. Ben Greenfield, I'm a huge fan. I don't know if that's a compliment or an insult to call <laughs> me a fish, but I'll take it. Excellent. All right. No, it was meant in good faith. All right. So I was just going to really quickly, I know you're tight in time, go through a few items. Uh, yeah. Superfoods. What's your top kind of cut on superfoods? The really important ones, Pareto Principle, <laughs> top tier. <laughs> My take on superfoods is that they're a good way for people who want to make some fringe you know ingredient from the amazon of the far reaches of africa or asia sound sexy and uh, ultimately a good way to empty your pocketbook the thing is superfoods would like let's say you know a blueberry or, or goji or you know the unicorn tear vegetable from the far reaches of southeast asia or whatever else you know these are interesting human beings for uh, I, I think as part of our our, our nature, we, we kind of have grass is always greener syndrome, right? If this came from far away, you know, kings would send people, you know, to the Orient off to, you know, find cinnamon or send Christopher Columbus, you know, off to the Americas to find the newest, greatest fountain of youth. But I'm convinced that good medicine and super nutrient dense foods for most people growing about 100 acres around wherever you live. And I can certainly order dihydro berberine or berberine or bitter melon or you know any of these these type of blood sugar regulating compounds from you know from the Amazon literally and figuratively. But I can also just like go out in my backyard and harvest organ grape root, and I can you know take some you know Indian Ayurvedic triphala blend, or I can go out and literally ten feet from my front door find wild mint growing that has just a similar digestive effect. I think that when it comes to superfood you need to first look locally and I think that you would be surprised at what your local environment has to offer you and uh, you, it might not be as, as sexy and it might not be whatever's on the cover of Men's Health magazine but I'm a big fan of like locally found superfoods because there's a lot growing right under your nose that might keep you from you know saving all the jet fuel and packaging and everything else required to go get the the sexy superfoods that everybody's talking about you know Super, Ben. Thank you for that. And uh, Super, literally. Yeah. Super, literally. <laughs> yeah. no, no pun intended. <laughs> uh, liver, eggs, egg yolks, all those animal-based foods. Not so popular oh. these days, right? But They're what do you think of those for nutrient density? Oh. I, I, actually, I was under the impression they were getting more popular as people become aware of the, the nutrient density of them. And I, I'm a fan uh, of... Of, of organ meats you know awful so to speak you know the ribeye steaks that you pay 200 bucks for at a fancy steakhouse it's the same cut of meat that our ancestors would have kind of thrown out or at least not favored as much compared to the nutrient dense liver and heart and kidney and you know even brain or testicle and some of these other very fringe foods and so i'm a fan of them um, I think that you know, anytime you're looking at, at foods like that, and I mentioned this in my talk here, you know, you look at the the, 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 the rich man or woman's disease, you know, gout-like symptoms from uric acid crystallization in the joints if you're not careful, and so I think you have to pair them with a lot of a lot of plant-based polyphenols and flavanols to ensure that you're able to, to get rid of some of the uric acid, you know, like like quercetin and tart cherry and things like that. But I, I think the organ meats, for the most part, are absolutely amazing. I mean, I have, I have raw liver every morning in my smoothie, and it tastes like lifeblood. And, you know, eggs are nature's perfect packaged protein. I got 14 chickens, and, you know, I, get, I love the yolks. You know, they're orange and dark orange and light yellow and deep red. And occasionally, you know, much of the disturbance of my children, there's a little unborn baby chick embryo in there. But, you know, did, you know, housewives in America got so used to that dark yellow-orange color, they started to dye the egg yolk, you know, and, and, and these chickens that are grown in, in uh, factory farms. They don't, they don't have that, that great of a yolk or protein content or it's higher in the omega-6 fatty acid 
birds, but I, I think that that a nice egg from a from a pastured or a cage-free hen that's fed, you know, preferably a diet low in omega-6 grains, you know, and eats more insects and and plants and things like that, you know, which is what our our chickens feed upon. I think it's just fantastic. So yeah, I, mean, I, I give eggs and liver a thumbs up, absolutely. Excellent, Ben. Yeah. And one more thing, then, because I know we're tight on time. Uh, the top metabolic tests for longevity and for indicating your true health level. Oh, uh, well, I mean, metabolism technically would be something that you'd, you'd measure, you know, via like indirect calorimetry, you know, oxygen consumption and carbon dioxide production. And, and you know, that, that's a test you could find in an exercise physiology lab or, you know, a lot of health facilities. I think there's even a, I think a company here called PNOE. They have a, a calorimetry device you can use at home. There's companies like Lumen that send them little devices you can breathe in and out of to analyze, you know, fat oxidation versus carbohydrate oxidation, things like that. But I think those metabolic measurements are interesting. I think they're most applicable to, like, the athletic population who wants to, you know, see what their, you know, how many calories they're burning at a specific heart rate or what their carb through or fat output is or, or fat 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 uh, fat uh, metabolism is but you know so 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 when you talk about metabolic measurements that's technically like like a calorimetry based analysis that I don't think pairs too well with with anti-aging and longevity versus just pure performance and nutrition but I think that probably the three most important metrics to track for anti-aging and longevity would be number one inflammation kind of difficult to measure right now you go to the doctor and get your crp your fibrinogen and cytokines and your whole panel panel at the doctor there's not a good lot of good home tests for inflammation but blood glucose you know I'm, I'm, I'm wearing right now i don't wear this all the time but i've got one on right now uh, blood glucose and tracking glycemic variability in addition to inflammation i think is a fantastic metric and then if i could name a third it would be the heart rate variability you know which is a really good it, it just covers so many variables you know stress and sleep and and readiness and training status and can even be reflective of, you know, for example, inflammation. Not not direct correlation, but if you have a low HRV, it could be indicative that you have a, a higher amount of inflammation. So I think I think I'd say inflammation, glycemic variability, and HRV, if you're gonna track anything, would be the top three metrics to track for, for just general health. Excellent. And yeah. I actually have a whoop device for HRV. I got oh yeah, yeah. The whoop's fantastic for that. Yeah. And you know what's fantastic if you're not behaving well or you're maybe having too much wine, <laughs> it tells you every morning uh -huh. and it keeps I know. on track. I know, it's annoying. Even if you like wake up and you feel fantastic and you're ready to go crush the day, then you look at your score and it tells you that you're at sixty percent and all of a sudden you're like, oh, I guess I don't feel so great because my computer said. <laughs> <laughs> Machine says no. <laughs> yeah. Thanks so much, oh, Ben. Great to meet you. Yeah, Honored. good to meet you too. Thanks. Thank thanks. you. Bye. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, great stuff, Ben. Oh, that cool. was super. Thanks, Ben. Yeah, thanks. you know, attention yeah. spans these days are so short that short and tight is great. That's right. Just mm. tell Joe Rogan that with his four hour podcast. <laughs> As always, hope you enjoyed that and don't forget to hit the like button and the subscribe button, all important. And do hit that little notification bell also. And thanks so much to all my Patreon and PayPal supporters. Helps keep me going, that's a key source of income. And with trips to London and all the other work I do, it really helps to keep supported there at some level. So anyone else seeing my material, again, please consider hopping on. The links are down below. So thanks, everyone. And here's the place where you get the non-corporate, non-media, legacy, biased kind of information and data. And I hope to keep delivering that so you can keep enjoying getting true insights into what's going on in the world today. So thank you.